it would seem to me that there's a whole group of people who think that in our modern digital age, then making real world models is a bit of a waste of time. Now, I couldn't disagree with that more. I think model making is extremely important, and of course I think that for a number of reasons. I mean, first would be we're physical creatures and we interact with our real world in a real physical way. But more than that, the understanding of machines is very important because the principles in machines, well, well they, they govern everything. I mean, you know, that they're in biology, they're in computers, they're in the cars, they're in absolutely everything. And to understand, or at least get a basic understanding of what's going on, understanding the principles of machines and making models to get a feeling for those principles is fundamental to what we should be doing. It gives us a real understanding. I mean, these things are referred to as machines, and quite correctly so. They're actually nothing more than a bunch of switches. I mean, yes, the switches are very, very small, and there's lots of them, but that's all they are. The trick of them is when to turn those switches off and on. So it's just a whole bunch of switches. And the same is true of any machine, any system you're going to come across, it's governed by the same principles. And what a machine does is it modifies a force. It takes an input, modifies it, and gives an output. A bicycle is a great example. Your legs provide the input, you press on a crank, it turns a chain, it turns the wheel, and off you go. It's a machine modifying force. Machines can seem very, very complicated. I mean, pop the hood of your car and stare into it and try to decide what's doing what. It'll be a bit of a mystery, unless you break it down into blocks. So when you take the machine block, it's always made up of separate little blocks called mechanisms. So a car is a group of mechanisms. It has a piston, it has a crank, that has a shaft that takes it to a gearbox, another shaft that takes it to the wheels. You fire up the engine and off you go. It's just a group of mechanisms joined together that make up a machine. And of course, machine mechanisms in themselves are made of parts. And those parts always have a specific function. So if we look at parts, look at the mechanism, look at the machine, that building of blocks will give us a clearer understanding of what it is we're actually looking at, how it works, and what we can do about it. And of course this is supremely important, because if you don't understand something, well you can be fooled. And not being fooled, I would say, was important. So, at the basis of that, it's understanding how those things work and how you make them and how you put them together. And that's what we're going to look at. We're going to look at some of the parts and then how they're put together as mechanisms and then how that's put together as a machine. So let's start with the, the very basic part, and that is the joint. Because you need to join things together, sometimes statically, in which case it's just a bunch of screws where you bolt one piece onto another. But usually, that joint needs to move. And surprisingly enough, there aren't that many different types of joints. The pin joint, it's actually very, very easy. And to create it, we're going to use Tinkercad. And we're going to use Tinkercad because it's free. It's really easy to use. And there's a ton of support videos out there to help you if this is your first time doing it. But it is super easy. Once you've registered and got to the home page, click Create. 3D design, and you will be presented with the work plane where everything happens. And these are the primitives that we're going to be using. My first step is always to put on the ruler so I know how big everything is that I'm going to be making. For a pin joint, we just need to join two arms together, so let's create an arm for that. Pick a block, it's a bit too big, let's make it four millimeters high, 16 millimeters across, and say 100 millimeters deep. That will be the basics of what it is that we're going to build on. Now it's not very pretty, so let's pretty it up with this primitive here, which is the half cylinder. Because the half cylinder isn't in the right orientation. So if we click here, we can jump to the half cylinder, and we can see these arrows here, which will change the rotation for us. Let's change that to 90 degrees. It goes around the centre, so we need to make that back to zero so it sits on the plane then back out to the home, and we can see that we're still wrongly oriented. We need to twist it round there, 90 degrees, and make it four. There we go, four millimeters high, 16 millimeters across, and to keep the cylinder, eight millimeters deep. And now we've got a half cylinder. 
Now we need to line them up, so stretch over the two of them, hit the alignment tool, click on the one you want to align to, we can align to there and there, and we've got it, we know it's eight millimeters high. If you look here, you'll see one millimeter. So this we need to move down eight millimeters. And we have a nice rounded end. Now we need to duplicate that, and it's that button there. Then we can turn that around to be 180 degrees and we can move that to down here. Realign it. And move that eight millimeters up. We need to put a couple of holes in here and we use that primitive for the holes, make it six millimeters by six millimeter hole. Realign that. And move that up. There we go. Now we can duplicate that. Realign that. that up three. Now if we create a box all the way around them and we unite them, there we go, we get our bar that we're going to join. We need two bars so we just duplicate it and we get our two bars. Now we can export that as an STL file. Export, STL. And when we've printed them, that's what we get. So we can take a bolt, stick it through there, and we've got ourselves a flexible pin joint. Of course, that's not very satisfying, so let's modify this a little bit. Okay, to modify it, back to Tinkercad, select that and then ungroup it. Now we've got all the parts that are separate, we select that, and you can see here we've got this pull-down menu, and we can make that a solid by clicking solid. Change the colour if we like. Now we've got a solid pin when it prints and we've got the holes so the pin will be integral. However, if we look at that, it's six millimeters by six millimeters. That hole is six millimeters by six millimeters. Because of the tolerance on the print, what I tend to do is down that a little bit by to 5.8, 5.6, something round about there. You'll have to test it and see depending on your printer. And then if we regroup that, We get one bar with an integral pin and we can print that. And when you've printed that, that's what you get. Now the pin's actually integral and of course we slot that on there. But as the machine moves, what's gonna happen is that arm is just gonna come off of there. So back to Tinkercad, back to our primitives. Let's select the cylinder. You'll notice this pull down bar tells us it's got 20 sides. That's a bit jagged to so increase that to the max of 64 and we get a much smoother cylinder. It's 20 high, so let's reduce that height a bit, say six, and make those a little bit smaller. We need to put a hole in there and again smooth it out a little bit. Let's make the hole six by six. Highlight them, align them. And we're making a little cap to go on the end of here to prevent that dropping off. Now we don't want the whole cap to touch there, so what we need is yet another cylinder, and this time. Smooth it, let's make it eight by eight. We made that last one six, so let's make it eight. 
and again centre them. To there, but this time we centre here, here and here and we'll get a tiny step on that that we want to prevent hitting this entire surface. And There we go, there's our printable cap that will fit on that and prevent that from dropping off. And there it is all fitted together. And now that will move without that actually dropping off. Of course, this may seem very trivial, but actually it's really important. This is the Contenescu torque converter that we made in a previous video. It's a constant variable converter. And this whole section, all the way down here, all the way across here and here, are made of those joints that we've just gone through. So the chain drive of the torque converter is also a set of pin joints. They're just set closely together. Let's have a look at this. This is a ratchet-based continually variable transmission. It varies its transmission by the height of that, which varies the swing of that arm. If we have a closer look at this, what you can see are the pin joints. If I take the cap off, now there's been a couple of modifications to this which we're going to go through. One is we've put a bearing in there. So instead of having plastic sliding on plastic, we've got a, a bearing in there to prevent wear and make it all move a bit more easily. And here we've got what's called a sliding crank. So that can slide up and down, changing the pivot point. And that really is just a modification of the pin joint. Back at the end of Tinkercad, and this time let's highlight that one, and we'll ungroup it so we get back to where we were, and we have this one. There's a number of ways we could do this. I find the easiest way is just to duplicate that by clicking the duplicate, and then we need to increase that to the size of our bearing, and in my case it's 12 by 12, and we know it's 4 millimeters high, so let's make it 6. And if we zoom in on that by clicking this so that we're close to it, we can see it's still too jagged, so let's make it nice and smooth. And if we click that, hold down the shift and click that one, it will select only those two objects and we can align them to each other on that pin that we've already aligned. So it makes the whole job much easier. Now we can delete that one. You actually don't need to, you could leave it there, but it's a bit scruffy. And this time we can select those and we can group them and we get a hole big enough there to stuff our bearing into. Okay, so I've created another one there to take a bearing. To get our sliding joint, we need to cut a slice in here. So if we take this, which is our cubic primitive, and we remember that this is 16 across. I've left two millimeters here, so we take away four from there. We need to make that 12 and we need to make that 12. We could make the height to be something like four or eight or something like that, it really doesn't matter. But when we position that in the center, and we do that by centering to that, so center and center, then we'll get a cutout. Now we need the cutout obviously to spread a little bit further than that, so if we highlight that and we make that say, oh, I don't know, 50, there we go, and then we can center that again. And if we merge that, what we'll get is a cutout in the middle of our print. Of course, that's not very pretty. So what we want is nice rounded ends. And for the rounded ends, then we can duplicate what we did here. So if we take a cylinder, smooth it out, 12, 12, 8, say. Then we can put that cylinder in there, and then when we regroup it, what we'll get is nice ends. But of course, it's not too good there to actually try to align it, so we'll ungroup it and we'll align these two to each other. Let's get rid of that. Highlight the two of them and then align. We'll align there to the center, there we go. And we can see that we've actually got that pretty good. So we could align it to here, so we know where it is, we've got our setting here at one millimeter, and if we select that, then we can move that up by pressing the arrow keys six millimeters. One, two, three, four, five, six. Duplicate it. 
and then we can align that, I shift the key, there we go, we can align that to this end here, and again highlight it, and move that out by six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now we group those. We can print that and we have our slot cut in there. And that's how I made all of these things. So it doesn't need to be a complicated activity, nor do you need to have a thorough understanding of a complicated CAD program when you've got Lego kind of programs like Tinkercad to get you up and to get you going. Now, I'm not saying that CAD programs aren't any good. Of course, the more complicated your CAD program, the better the machine that you're going to develop is. But using simple tools, simple joints to their fullest will help you create machines and models and gain an understanding of how mechanisms and how machines actually work. It really doesn't have to be that difficult to create interesting and different machines and explore ideas. So I thought I would go through the very simple pin joint and some of the adaptations because it is more adaptable than that. Normal door hinges are just an example of pin joints. So they're really easy to do, very versatile, very easy to design and build and 3D print. I hope you enjoyed the video. We will be exploring other kinds of joints and other ideas in other videos, but I do hope you enjoyed this one. Thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe.